What's up everybody? This is David with Average Joe Investing and last week I officially completely sold out of one of the positions I actually kind of started one of my portfolios with and that's gonna be the Ford Motor Company. Now this is a position that I've been talking about for about the last month or so saying I was kind of getting towards the end I was probably gonna sell out relatively soon. Ford's a company that's been in and out of my portfolio at different stages of my investing career but it's officially 100% out of my portfolio so I thought this would be a great opportunity to talk about the money that I actually made on the position but also to answer a question that I get pretty frequently, and that is, how do you decide, you know, hey, it's finally time to cut ties with this company, it's finally time to kind of move on to something else, what's changed fundamentally in the company that makes you want to move away from them, or just why the position doesn't make sense anymore? So that's a question that I get asked quite frequently, so we'll go over that, but first up, for the people who care, let's go over how much money I actually made on this position. One thing to keep in mind is that Ford has been in and out of my portfolio basically since I first started investing, but all of the shares that I just sold off, I held from around November and December of 2018 all the way up until last week. So we'll be talking about the profit I took on those specific shares, not kind of the entire time because I had some positions where when you first start investing, you kind of buy and sell things way too frequently. So I was like buying it and a month and a half later I was selling it. So this is going to be the long-term capital gains because I held it for over a year on the position that was held from November and December of 2018 up until now. So for those of you that don't know, I actually held Ford in two different portfolios. So obviously in the M1 Finance portfolio I've been showing here for a while, but I also held Ford in another portfolio where I actually had a decent amount more shares in that one. So because I bought them at slightly different times, my average cost per share is going to be a little bit different. So I'll go over kind of both of them. So up first will be M1 Finance. So my average cost per share in M1 Finance was $8.71. When I sold out, I sold out at $9.21 which is a difference of 50 cents per share. Now M1 Finance can get a little bit confusing just because you can buy partial shares, but luckily when I took a look, I had 35.996 shares. So we were so close to having 36. We're just gonna round up say 36 shares just to make the math a little bit easier here. So 36 shares times the 50 cents per share that we made, that's gonna be $18 in profit just on the actual stock price. Now keep in mind, Ford is not in your portfolio because you think it's all of a sudden gonna double or triple or quadruple in cost. Really what you're expecting to happen here is to just collect that very, very nice dividend, which if you bought in at under $9 a share is like 7%. So for me, when I did buy in, it was between November and December in my M1 Finance account. So I actually missed by a couple of days there when it went ex-dividend. So I actually didn't get the dividend right off the bat when I invested in them. The first dividend payment I got was on March 1st. My next one was June 3rd, September 3rd, and December 2nd. Those are all going to be for 15 cents per share. So not too awful bad. That's going to be 60 cents a year. Again, this does not have the special dividend they used to pay in it. Just because, again, these were bought in 2018. They did not do the special dividend. It was 2017 when I first got that. They did not pay it out in the course of the time I actually owned the stock. So no special dividends here. Also, the next time this stock goes ex-dividend is actually January 29th. So by about a week, I'm not going to catch that last dividend payout here. Not a big deal. A lot of times people know that a 15 cent dividend is going to come up. So the stock price will kind of drop to kind of reflect that a little bit or it'll pick up to reflect that. So I'm not too awful worried about losing that. But overall on that position, that means that we made $21.60 in dividends over that course of time. So we add that to the $18 we made in profit. That means we had a total gain on those 36 shares of $39.60. Or, in other words, about $1.10 profit per share that we had in the portfolio. That's not too awful bad. We paid $8.71 per share. We ended up with a value of basically $9.81. So we do a percent change there. That's going to be a 12.63% increase over the 14 months I owned it there. Also, because this is an M1 Finance, that does mean that it was actually in my Roth IRA account. So I don't have to worry about taxes on this. So that is going to be an actual recognized gain. I can actually go out and invest in something else. We'll go over the other portfolio a little bit quicker just because we kind of know what numbers we're going to be looking at. So it's going to be relatively similar. So the average cost per share in this portfolio was actually $8.65. So I bought this one a little bit later. I bought this one in December. So I didn't have to kind of balance between the cost of what it was in November and December. Very, very simple. I just bought them in kind of one bulk buy. I sold out at the same price, the $9.21. So that's going to be a 56 cent per share difference there. So obviously we made an extra six cents per share, not too awful bad. Number of shares here, significantly higher. I had 115. I actually bought this one as a decent block. It cost me about $1,000. So our profit per, on the shares there is gonna be $64.40. Same exact dividend payouts, no special dividend or anything like that. 
And again, because I sold these last week, I am not going to get the uh, dividend for this time when it goes ex-dividend on January 29th. So overall, the dividend payouts I got on this portfolio was $69. We go ahead, we add that to the $64.40 I already made. That's $133.40 we made on this a little bit bigger position. Not too awful bad considering it cost us about $1,000. In about 14 months, 13, 14 months, we made $133. So I feel pretty good about that. So our profit per share is going to be $1.16 per share. Again, we plug that into a percent change calculator. Started out at $8.65. Ended up value there of $9.81. So that's going to be a difference of 13.4% increase over the last 13 months. And again, keep in mind, this one was not in a Roth IRA account. They were held long enough to be qualified dividends, as well as it was held for over a year, so it's going to be long-term capital gains. So I will be taxed at a lower rate, but this one we do actually have to take the taxes out of. So the actual recognized gain is going to be a little bit lower than what I'm showing here. Okay, so that is the amount of money that I actually made on the Ford stock that I recently owned. So again, I did kind of buy and sell before that. I was actually buying Ford back in like 2017. But those are going to be the most recent shares I actually held and how much money I made on them. But let's go ahead and do just kind of a mini stock analysis here. Go over kind of what we're looking at in Ford and why it no longer really made sense for me. So up first, we'll go over just kind of those basic numbers that a lot of people care about when they're looking at investing. So Ford stock currently is only $8.91. So it's already dropped 30 cents per share since I sold it out of my position. That's pretty bad. It's only been a couple of days. So that's a pretty big drop off. For, you know, percentage-wise, it doesn't seem like a lot, 30 cents, but percentage-wise on how small the stock price is, that's actually relatively high. The dividend rate right now is 6.67%, so very, very nice. I mean, they haven't cut the dividend yet. They're still paying 60 cents per year on a stock that's now trading under $9 per share. That's pretty decent. The dividend payout is only around 46%. So it is actually something that right now, if everything stayed equal, it would be sustainable. The company can still grow. That's actually very, very nice to see. A lot of times when companies are paying 5 6 7% dividends, their payout ratio is a lot closer to 80%, 90%. So it's a lot harder to continue to just keep throwing money back into the company. The 52-week high was $10.56. 52-week low is $8.16. Now, again, I held it a lot more than just over the course of the last year. So for me personally, while I own the stock there at $8.70, kind of around there per share, realistically, the price went anywhere from $8.05 per share all the way up to about $12.50. So at one point, I was actually up very, very high on the position, but I wasn't really thinking I wanted to sell out because at the time, Ford actually looked kind of promising. But again, things have changed. The company is not fundamentally the same company it was. So let's dive into a couple of those reasons and why I sold out my position. So for me personally... Ford is just changing too much fundamentally from what I thought I was investing in, in the sense that they're just not really focusing or doing well in the areas that we were really expecting them to. So just for example, we've talked about over the last year where Ford actually discontinued the Focus, the Fiesta, the Fusion. And yes, they're not Ford's number one sellers. Ford is much, much more well known for their trucks and their SUVs. But again, that's kind of like Coca-Cola selling out, you know, eh, we're not going to sell Sprite anymore because it's not our top sales. We're going to get rid of Mellow Yellow because, you know, we don't sell nearly as much as Mountain Dew does. Sure, you don't sell as much as you do with, say, Coca-Cola, which is the main product, but that's still a pretty important staple. I mean, I remember growing up, you know, the Fiesta, the Focus, the Fusion, the Taurus, which is now discontinued. Those are all vehicles that you saw all over the place. And now, unfortunately, all discontinued, focusing just on trucks and SUVs. So that's one fundamental difference about the company. They're kind of shrinking what they're actually selling out there. Also, the main reason why I'm kind of getting turned off Ford right now is I bought into them because of how well they were doing globally. So in North America, sure, they're going to continue to sell decent amounts of trucks, SUVs. That's kind of what we expected. And that's fine. If you want something that's just going to maintain the dividend payout, that's probably enough. But there was so much growth going on when I first got into investing over in, say, China, for example, Ford was selling an insane amount of vehicles. And unfortunately, since 2016, it's kind of taken a nosedive to the point where last year in 2019, they sold about half the amount of vehicles in China as they sold in 2016. So that's part of the reason why we saw a stock that was $12.50 go down to like $9 per share because one of their biggest things is we're going to go to China, we're going to sell just a ton of vehicles, and we're going to be significantly better over there. In North America, yes, we're going to try to continue to sell what we're selling, but globally, we want to be a bigger global brand. Well, over the course of the last year, in North America, they did increase sales. That's very good. But globally, across the rest of the world, they were actually down about 2% in revenue. 
So the thing we're trying to expand to, the thing we're trying to make the company bigger in, was kind of a pretty big flop. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like the bleeding is gonna stop there either because they're actually projecting to do even worse in 2020. If we just take a look at 2019, we're not taking a look at 2020, which they've already kind of slashed projections on, which is pretty disappointing. But if we take a look at just 2019 versus 2018, just in China, which again, massive, massive country, tons and tons of people live there. This should be a massive market for them. They sold 26.1% less vehicles just between 2019 and 2018. That's a pretty significant drop off. And like I said, we're at about 50% of the vehicles they sold in China in 2016. That's really disappointing if you're investing in Ford, you really wanna see this global growth. It just doesn't exist anymore. Now, obviously when you invest in a company, yes, it's nice for them to kind of stay stable, but we really wanna see growth. The stock market is stronger right now than it's ever been in the past. A lot of companies are doing really, really well. Sales are up pretty much across the board for everybody. And that's unfortunately just not the case for Ford. So just for example, in 2018, they had a total earnings of about $7 billion. If we take a look at 2019, they're actually projecting the sales totals now to be 6.5 to 7 billion. So that's gonna be half a billion lower. And actually, if you take a look in the beginning of 2019, what the projections were, they were actually between seven and 7.5 billion. So we've already lowered the projections a ton. Unfortunately, when we get to this earnings call that's gonna be coming up in February, I think it's gonna be a lot uglier than people expect it to be. Unfortunately, these projected sales just keep going down and down. And like I said, they're already projecting 2020 to be worse than 2019 was. So we're kind of on a downward slide. 2016, absolutely incredible worldwide. And unfortunately, Ford just isn't really back up to that quality of a company. The other piece of news that you probably see out there about Ford right now is that they're actually gonna take a $2.2 billion loss related to pensions. They expect that to have a $1.7 billion cut to their net income. I wouldn't worry about that too awful much. Pensions are something that we kind of knew was gonna come. So yes, their next earnings will look weaker because of that. But honestly, I wouldn't worry about that whatsoever. I would look more into the cuts that we've seen because we lost the cars, like the Focus, the Fiesta, the Fusion. We're gonna see a loss because of that. We're gonna see a loss because of global sales. So I'd be focusing on that kind of thing a lot more than pensions. Pensions are something companies are gonna pay out either way. It's much, much more important to be taking a look at the bottom line, kind of where the company's headed. So yes, during the next earnings, they're gonna be a little bit lower because of this cost right here. I'm not too awful worried about that one for Ford. So realistically, we just wanna take a look at the company in general. Like I said, this is a company I was investing in because we really thought we were gonna see growth here. And unfortunately, they've kind of dropped the ball. Now they are saying they're gonna put a bunch more vehicles out there. They're saying, especially in China, they're gonna have just a ton of more options for them going into about 2022 with actually a decent number of them being electric vehicles. So we'll see how those pan out, especially you know when you're related to something like Tesla, which obviously just has pre-orders out the wazoo right now. So we'll see how Ford actually competes on that stage. But for now, it's just a company I sold out of. I don't need to be buying into them right this second. And sure, a lot of people are gonna say, hold it long term in five, 10 years, you're gonna be really happy about this. But here's the thing, I like my money to be doing work for me. And realistically, Ford is a stock that I'm pretty sure in about a year, year and a half, I can still buy somewhere around $9 per share, $9.30 per share. So I'm not that worried getting out of it, putting my money to work somewhere else, and then maybe circling back with Ford at some point later down the line. Anyways, I've been David with Average Joe Investing. I'll see you guys all very soon. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. I'll get back to you guys as soon as possible.